Hi, fifth graders. We are back for week number 28. Oh, let me double check. <laughs> Sorry. My brain. 27. Week number 27 for our remote learning. Um, I want to remind you that this week is only a four-day week. So that's why I'm only doing... Part of the reason why I'm only doing one math lesson, the other part is because it's kind of a longer lesson. So I didn't want to overwhelm you. Um with lots of stuff this week because it is before break and I want to make sure you get everything caught up completely and handed in so that way you can start after spring break fresh and with a clean slate with everything done. So please make sure you get everything completed and handed in um, by Thursday and Thursday will be the day that um, will be the last day before break and then you are off. Um, from this Friday until April 13th. So I will not be posting any new lessons until April 13th. It's a Tuesday, okay? So I just wanted to remind you that um, it is spring break coming up. This is our, these are, will be our last four days. Um, and then you get some, some time off. So I really want you working hard for these four days, getting everything completely caught up and handed in so that way you can start fresh, like I said, after spring break with a fresh clean slate, okay? So we're going to be doing module eight, lesson five, the representations of area to develop procedures. So basically we're going to be able to find the product of fractions using an area model. So let's see what that means. If we have a contractor and they buy rectangular floor tiles for a home that he is building, how could we find the area of the tile? So we can see that this tile is 3 fourths feet by 1 third feet. Now to find the area of anything, we multiply length times width, right? Area equals length times the width. So to solve this problem, we would be multiplying 3 fourths times 1 third. But I want to show you, oops, sorry, visually how that would look on a, an, an area model. So I want to first, we're going to do 3 fourths across the top. So because 3 fourths, right, is our length. So I'm going to separate this into four equal pieces because it is fourths. So I need four equal pieces. And I know that I have it is three fourths. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to shade three fourths. So my block, right, using the area model, we have, here's our three-fourths. Now, I need to break it up in the other direction into thirds because I have one-thirds. So I'm going to break up my square into thirds now. And basically, this is going to give us a visual, this is going to help hopefully help you understand why this works the way it does. And I'm going to use purple to shade in our one-third. So here is our one-third. Now what we can see is how many total pieces did this get broken up into? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So we have 12 total pieces, and how many overlap? One, two, three overlap. So the area that's represented by the parts of the model that are shaded in twice, so that would equal three twelfths square foot. So the area of the tile is three-fourths square foot. So basically what I'm doing is I'm multiplying my bottom and I'm multiplying my top. I'm showing this to you in a picture form so hopefully you can see why it works that way. Because if I, I need to break it up into fourths, 
break it up into thirds, shade in the part that that represents each of the fractions and then the part that overlaps, right? We can see here's where our blue and our purple overlap, these three. Okay? So, let's try another one. So, to tile a different room, the tile shown at the right is used. So, we're going to use this tile. We want to know how many square feet just this tile is. Okay? So, we can see that it is two-thirds by three-fourths. Right? Two-thirds by three-fourths. So I'm going to start across the top, so we need thirds, right? We use our denominator to break up our square. So we have thirds. And how many of those am I coloring in? I'm going to color two of those in, right? Because I have two thirds. Okay, so there's my two-thirds and sorry I'm just gonna do it just a little bit darker because when I did the purple before you could it was a little harder to see the the blue and now along the side right our area model length times width so we're gonna multiply three-fourths so I need four equal pieces so I'm gonna first split it in half and then I'm gonna split the halves in half so now I have four pieces and I need to shade in three of them, right? One, two, three. Okay, so here is my three fourths. So I can see total, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I have 12 total pieces. And how many are shaded by both colors? One, two, three, four, five, six. So two thirds times three fourths equals six twelfths. So we're not going to worry about letter A. The area of the tile, two thirds times three fourths equals six twelfths. So the area is six twelfths square. Let's look back. We want feet, square feet, because we're looking for area. Remember, we always had square in front of the um, the unit, the measurement. Okay? All righty. Number two. For another room in the house that he is building, the contractor uses floorboards with the dimensions shown. So the floorboards are three-fourths by four-ninths. So we need to draw an area model to find the area of the floorboards. Floorboards. So we want three fourths by four ninths. Okay. So three fourths. So I'm going to break it in half and then half again. So that way I have my fourths. And I want to shade in three of those. One, two, three. Shade in three. Again, like I said, I'm going to do it. So if you have two different colors, I probably should have mentioned this at the start, it would probably work best. Or you can just see where it gets super dark, right? Where the extra, extra dark, or where your, your brackets are. Okay, so this is like these, right? These are your brackets. This is my three-fourths. All right. Now, I want four ninths. So I can't do it in half because nine is an odd number, so I just have to be strategic and careful as I'm doing my nine equal pieces. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay? And I'm gonna shade in four of them. So I'm going to go in this direction for four. So I'm going to count down four and then I'm going to go up. I think that's the easiest. So that way I don't overlap. 
I don't go down too far. Okay. So this part is my four ninths. So how many total pieces do I have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty one. 5 to 6, 7 to 8, 2 to 9, 30 through 1 through 2, through 3 through 4 through 5, 36, which if 4 times 9 is 36. And then how many are doubly shaded? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, which 3 times 4 would equal 12. So the area of the floorboard is 12 36 square, and this time we're using yards. All right? So when we multiply, right, we multiply, so the area will be modeled with this equation. You're going to multiply the numerators, 4 times 3, then multiply the denominators, 9 times 4, and that's your answer. Okay? So we're going to skip C and D because we did the work, right? We don't need to write sentences. We did the work. All right, so could we do this without drawing a picture? I think we could, right? So, a store is selling new wooden floorboards that measure two-thirds yard by one-twelfth yard. What is the area of the floorboard? So, remember, area, length times width. So, we would have two-thirds times one-twelfth. Two times one is two. 3 times 12 is 36, so the answer is 2 36 square, and our label is yards. Okay, we're not going to worry about drawing the area model to check. Because if we can multiply top by bottom, or if we can multiply, we should be able to do this without drawing a picture. All right, check for understanding. Ms. Lynn is using tiles that measure one half foot by two thirds foot. What is the area of each tile? Write a multiplication equation to model the problem. One foot by two foot, or two thirds foot. Ah, one half foot by, sorry, two thirds foot. All right, multiply your numerators. One times two is two. Multiply your denominators. Two times three is six. So, 2, 6 square feet. To fit in a corner, the contractor cuts the tile as shown in half. What is the area of one piece of the cut tile? Write a multiplication equation to model the area. Well, he takes this and cuts it in half. So first, we need to find out, well, what is the area of this tile? And then we're going to need to find out what is half of that. So first, the area of the tile, 1 times 5 is 5, 3 times 6 is 18. Now we need to find half of that. So times half, which would equal 5 times 1 is 5, and 18 times 2 is 36. So half of this tile is 536 square feet. So first you have to multiply length times width to get your how, how much the whole tile is. And then to find half of it, you're going to multiply by one half. And that gets you your answer of 536. All right, find the product. 3 times 2 is 6, 8 times 3 is 24. This is as simple as if you know your multiplication facts, you're going to be able to solve these. 4 times 3 is 12, 9 times 5 is 45. Multiply your numerators, then multiply your denominators. 3 times 9 is 27, 2 times 12 is 24. This one is an improper fraction. Our top number is bigger than our bottom number, but we're not asked to um, to simplify it, so we're not going to worry about it. 
Okay, so we're on the on your own part. If you want to do this part independently and then come back and check your answers, you can, or you can just keep on with me. So a farm field measures three eighths mile wide by two thirds mile long. What fraction of a square mile is the area of the field? So we're going to we want to know the area of the field. Length times width, two thirds times. 3 eighths. Don't worry about the explaining. We're just going to do the work. The explaining can be done by showing your work. 2 times 3 is 6. 3 times 8 is 24. So 6, 24 square miles. Okay. Mr. Chu has a large box for wet boots in his classroom. He wants to put plastic sheeting under the box. The dimensions of the box are 3 fourths yard and 7 eighths yard. How much sheeting does he need? So we can show our picture, right? Because we know we're going to be multiplying 3 fourths times 7 eighths. So uh, if you want to do the picture, you can, or you can just do the 3 fourths times 7 eighths, okay? So if we were to just do our equation, 3 fourths times 7 eighths, 3 times 7 is 21, 4 times 8 is 32, so it would be 21, 32 square yards. You can skip this part. You don't have to do that part. You can just jump right down to writing your equation and solving. I don't want to make it harder than it is or add extra. I mean, if you can multiply, then you're good to go. 5 6 times 2 fifths. 5 times 2 is 10. 6 times 5 is 30th. 30 is 10 thirtieths. 3 eighths times 3 ninths. Eight, 3 times 3 is 9. 8 times 7 is 56. 9 56. 3 fifths times 5 eighths. 3 times 5 is 15. 5 times 8 is 40. 15 40. And the last page, um, we're not going to explain, we're just going to solve, okay? So if we have one half times two thirds times three fourths. Now what we need to do is multiply two of our fractions first, and then we can multiply the other fraction with that, okay? So let's do one half times two thirds. So one half times two thirds, one times two is two. 2 times 3 is 6. Then we're going to multiply that by 3 fourths. 2 times 3 is 6. 6 times 4 is 24. So our answer is 6 24 fourths. Okay, again, you do not need to do this, but if you want to, if this helps you, keeps you more comfortable and confident, go ahead. But we're going to be multiplying 5 eighths times. 3 fourths. 5 times 3, 15. 8 times 4, 32. So we have 15, 32 square feet. And the last one, 7 twelfths. A sheet of paper measures 7 twelfths foot by 7 eighths foot. What is the area of the sheet of paper? 7 twelfths times 7 eighths. 7 times 7 is 49. 12 times 8 is 96 square feet. Okay? So you're going to have just the one sheet for homework tonight. If you want to use the square to help you with the area, you can. Or if you're okay with just multiplying length times width, you can do that as well. Um, I won't penalize you if you don't do the, use the, using the square to help you find the area. But you can use it. Excuse me, if you think it will help you. And I'm going to have you do um, all of the problems except for number nine. You can skip number nine. Okay? When you are finished, please make sure you hand this in. And um, I hope you have a fabulous spring break. And I will see you on Tuesday, April 13th. Have a great day. Bye.